Hey guys, I'm Rodin. Welcome to Water Baby Tarot as presented by Bomby Spirit. I hope you guys are doing good today. I'm going to be doing the channeling and crystal readings for December for my Cappies, Tauruses, and Virgos. Now the way this works for those who are new, thanks for coming over and checking us out. Don't forget to like, sub, and comment, um, and share. Don't forget to share. Anyway, so I use two decks. I use Crystal's The Stone Deck. All the decks I use are linked below for your convenience. And I use crystal, the Crystal Wisdom Healing Oracle Deck. Now I pull uh, crystals to see, I pull cards so crystals are recommended for you for the month. And then I go ahead and I do a tarot card reading to see why I need those crystals. Some people love the crystal portion, some people love the tarot portion. I started doing this because I got a lot of questions about crystals and it's been really fun. So why stop the fun ride, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. I will read the descriptions for these crystals because the descriptions are very short and it kind of just helps some of you who are like really new to crystals and you want to learn more about them, okay? Um, now keep in mind, these are generals. So they're not going to be for everybody. Hold on. <clears throat> I've also been having some respiratory stuff for a while. I do think some of it's energetic. I also think some of it's allergy or my asthma. There's all kinds of stuff going on with me right now. So just bear with me, but it has been a lot better, okay? Now coming back to the reading, keep in mind these are general and they are also timeless, even though I'm reading them for December. So please only take the messages as they resonate. They will not be for everybody, okay? Now December is going to be an interesting month. We've got a lot of transits going on, got a lot of shifts going on. And December, I think, has been long awaited just because we have Jupiter and Saturn finally moving into Aquarius, finally getting out of Capricorn for quite a while. Um, I forget the number. Um, Saturn's going to be to like 28 years or so. Uh, I feel like Jupiter is not too long behind that. But anyway, we got at least a couple decades before we got to worry about all this Capricorn energy with Jupiter and Saturn again. So yay. <laughs> uh, that's going to be happening on the 15th, 17th and 19th, I believe, for Jupiter and Saturn. On 1221, Jupiter and Saturn will actually be exact conjunct at zero degrees Aquarius. So that's going to be a very significant day. It's going to feel a little bit like a portal. Um, we have a lot of eclipse energy coming into December on the 30th. We have full, on the 30th of November, excuse me, we have full moon in Gemini, which is going to bring in a lot of North Node energy. I talked about this in my Patreon videos from my patrons are watching. Hey, um, <clears throat> I talked about full moon Gemini a little bit and how it's going to be really helping us to kind of anchor and cement a collective timeline a little bit more. So we're not all going to feel like we're all living in different dimensions and shit all the time. So we're gonna, because of that, we're gonna start to see a lot more permanent sort of changes going on as a result of what uh, we've experienced this year, okay? But that's gonna be at least a six month energy because of post shadow for eclipse energy. And in December, we also have new moon Sag, which is also gonna be another eclipse energy, some more change to come with that. Um, <clears throat> Uh, new moon and Sag is going to highlight south node energy, which is going to be a lot more about like new moon breaking habits, breaking cycles, breaking south node energy, breaking away from shit we need to break away from, right? Um, that's also going to be the last eclipse of the year. We also have full moon and Cancer closing out the year, which is great. Not an eclipse, but still full moon and Cancer. We're going to really feel that energy. Uh, you might not feel like the full moon and Cancer is going to be another... Um, opportunity to do final final cuts on things you've really been struggling to do final cut cutting away of things uh, that might even relate to what you were working through in like 2018 2019 sort of stuff because that's when we have north node and south node cap and cancer anything else a lot of sag energy mercury and venus will be moving into sagittarius in december what else what else what else i feel like there's another thing i feel like there's more I feel like there's more, but it's not coming to me right now. But those are the big things to be aware of. Ooh, one last thing. Uh, for Saturn, we do have Saturn being in that last degree of Capricorn for a few days. Um, I do believe that's around the 15th before it shifts into Aquarius. Uh, that last critical degree of Saturn Capricorn energy is going to feel like that pressure cooker. This is going to be the third time we've experienced it this year. The first time was when the lockdowns happened. The last time, oh shoot, when was the last time? Was that August or September? I believe it was August. And now we're going to be experiencing it for a third time. It's just going to be highlighting, again, some of the big changes that we've been experiencing as a collective as far as the dismantling of the way we've been living, dismantling of like how we view the patriarchy, all that stuff. 
So just expect a little spike in that sort of arena of things as far as like your own stress related to that stuff. Okay, a lot of information, but so that's the gist of December. So let's go ahead and get into it and see who goes first. Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo? Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo? You know, it's interesting. I'm like focusing on earth energy, but I'm getting pulled to water like very quickly. So um, you guys just might be really in your emotions in this time. Might be harnessing some of your own inner water sign energy or dealing with water signs. Um, I feel like it's really more the first former, as well as I said three things, um, where you're really just in your emotions. I feel a lot of intuitive energy. Some of you guys might be in the form of expansion for upgrades or activations, depending on where you are in your own spiritual journey and what labels resonate with you. Because at the end of the day, it's all the same stuff. We just label it differently. Okay. <clears throat> Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo? Virgo, Virgo, we're going with you. I feel a sense of excitement with you, actually, which I like. I like feeling that with you. There's almost like excitement for change and excitement for the new. I think after a long period of struggling to accept it, some of you struggling to accept it, and others of you just also going through uh, just like really dark energy, like dark hermity energy, and with Scorpio being in tow with that, because we've been going through a lot of Scorpionic energy as well coming into December. Uh, that feels like you've been going through some massive internal transformations. I just heard inner earthquake, actually. That's interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling excitement coming out of that. Almost like you're embracing Aquarian energy. Like, ready, yeah, ready to try new things. Ready to be kind of different. Nice, I like it. Ready to experiment. I'm hearing the word experiment. Okay, okay, where it goes. A lot of you, this is me in the realm of career. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, what happened to the deck? I did just see bloodstone, which is a stone for uh, physical vitality. Sorry, okay. <clears throat> Well, crystals are good for my Virgos for the month of December. Yeah, I feel like you're getting shoved into this Aquarian energy and um, even almost like a speeding up into aqua season. God, aqua season is going to be very interesting this year. <laughs> Coming into 2021 for everybody. Anyway, that's a whole other video. Virgos, Virgos, Virgos for December. Well, crystals are good for my Virgos for December. Now they're showing me orange. Um... Yeah, I just feel like you're ready to get creative and try new things and experiment. Some of you might um, have done a massive cleaning of your life because uh, I feel like it, a ton of internal changes. It feels it feels like the internal changes you've been going through have been very, very, very deep, um, long overdue. There's like there's a tension about it that I think has been created with people in your life. But yeah, I feel like. As you're coming out of all of that in December, some of you, that's not going to be until 2021, depending on how you handle these energies personally, right? There's just like a lot of lightheartedness, a lot of excitement. I'm actually seeing white, like a color, white. Um, yeah, you're just being a very different frequency and just ready for new things. And I keep hearing experiment, 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 and having fun with it, kind of being a kid about it. Feels good. <clears throat> Well, crystals are good for my Virgos. Ooh, yes, Labradite, not surprising. Labradite is a really great stone for the throat chakra, which you rule the throat chakra, Virgo. I believe, well, Mercury, right? Mercurial energy. But Labradite is also really great for going through transformations and being able to kind of embrace your, your, your transformative period with strength and honesty and like being able to express what you're going through and like, like I said I just a lot of creative energy coming out of this in the form of expression and that could be, mer be mercurial expression like talking or writing or ex like literally experimenting maybe I got some scientists who are watching me but I'm not surprised this came out okay that's going to really help you come out of that um birth canal so to speak okay <clears throat> Any other crystals? Let's see here. Wow, look at all the blue. Blue lace agate Virgo. Blue lace agate is also a stone that's going to help you with your throat chakra and expression. Um, some of you guys might really need to be talking, like as far as like what you're going to be creating. Embrace what you're good at and embrace what feels good and embrace what's fun. There's an element of like needing to make sure it's fun, whatever it is that you're doing, but I feel like it's going to be a very natural progression, again, as you're coming out of this like 
you know, dark scorpionic hermit, like, like Virgo meets Scorpio energy. <laughs> and it's like out of the birth canal. Um, some of you guys might have to have some really hard conversations. They keep bringing this up. Yeah, and I feel like that's because break, like, like breaking away, breaking away from people, breaking away from environments. God, you're just so ready for everything to be new. I love that though. I love that. Again, another song to help you embrace your own truth. What other crystals are with my Virgos for December? What other crystals are good for my Virgos for December? Ooh, yeah, you're getting to work, Virgo. Okay. You got two more. Okay. So Malachite. Malachite is actually a very Capricorn-like stone, which we do have some Capricorn energy because we are going to be entering Capricorn season, Tropic, in December towards the end of it as well and transiting out of Capricorn from Jupiter and Saturn. And Pluto, of course, it will be in Capricorn for a couple more years. Uh, more like a few, like 2024, I believe, 2023. Anyway. Malachite. Malachite is a really great stone to help you if you're working really hard to help you stay grounded and focused. It's also a really great stone for heart healing as well. And then Golden Healer came out. I do think you're going to have to have, oh God, my throat just went out. Uh, again, hard conversations that are going to be very healing for you and maybe even healing for other people. But again, it's, it's to break away um, as you're transforming. You're, and when we transform, the old doesn't align with us as well it's not it's not like you know when we go through a transformation some things will will be staying the same or like we'll be taking with us there's parts of us that are transformed the parts of you that are transformed you're not going to be aligned with anymore and so if that goes in hand in hand with like people or jobs or what have you you're going to have to address that and i feel like you're going to have to address that as far as being able to communicate it there's almost like a like a it's not rigid what is this there's like a rough and abrasive, that's the word. There is a bit of an abrasiveness I'm getting though, Virgo, so just be mindful. And I feel like it's coming from you, just being honest, um, with whoever you're gonna be need to be talking to, whether it's your boss, family, a lover, friends, what have you. There's like, you're being very honest and Virgos, you're very honest as we know, but it's a different honesty that's needed here. Like try, not, try to be more tactful because they keep getting an abrasive, 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 abrasive. But maybe for some of you, that's part of what you're also transforming about yourself is being able to be honest, but have that gentle touch about it. But I feel abrasive energy going on over here. And it might also be Virgo, I'm getting a little bit of anger. I feel like this is shared between you and another person, like resentment. Uh, that might be also what's, what's uh, bringing up this abrasive energy here. That's not going to be for all of you, but that really needs to be handled with, with care, okay, and compassion. So just be mindful of that. But beautiful, Virgo. I love this. Uh, let's go and get into the other deck. What other crystals are good for my Virgos for December? What other crystals are good for my Virgos for December? They keep wanting me to remind you guys that you might feel like you are going through an expansion or some kind of activation or ascension process. Again, whatever label resonates with you, words are primitive. <laughs> <laughs> Words are very limiting as far as being able to relay messages, but you'll know how that resonates for you. <clears throat> what other crystals are good for my Virgo? It's the month of December. Ooh, we got a lot over here. <laughs> of course, they're all heavy hitters as far as spirituality is concerned. So we have opal, which is a scorpionic stone. Um, it's really great for digging into those deep emotions. But again, there's also need to express your emotions here. I feel like that's like part of what's transforming about you is like how you do communicate with tact and like and being like very clear about what you're feeling versus like letting the yeah that's what it is like versus letting the emotion kind of take over you there's almost like a emotionally charged way of communicating virgo that is being transmuted which i like um apophyllite apophyllite um a stone that will help you with your intuition ascensions activations expansions all that sort of stuff and pyrite which is beautiful that is a personal power stone which i love i love pyrite you can use that for so many things but yeah i feel personal power with that
Any other crystals for Virgo for December? I just heard dig deep, Virgo, dig deep. Yeah, use the Scorpio energy. I think it's really helping you. I do feel like you were, okay. I feel like most of you have been in it already or are coming out of it by the time you watch this. But for those where like you've resisted a while, you might still be resisting. I just feel like before you dove into the hermit scorpionic energy, you resisted it. And I feel fear with that. Coming out really strong, Virgo. All right, that's it. I'm just curious what the bottom is. Yeah, Jasper, strengthen your foundation. That's a very grounding um, stone. Jasper comes in all kinds of colors, but yeah, very, very grounding. Like I said, Malachite's also here for that. And like I always say, the more you ground, the higher you can go. Because you are going pretty high here. I feel like the last three that came from this deck is really just more about expansion. So anyway, let's go ahead and read these. Opal. Uh, opals are well hydrated amorphous mineraloids. Precious opals are lusted after for their rainbow sparkle, aka diffraction. Common opals form in a range of colors and can deliver sensations that are anything but common. People who need it, the all black wardrobe set can benefit from black, precious opals, bold pop of color, and spiritual protection. Not so prolific artists can ride fire opals burn. Where to put it? General rule, white and blue vibe with the head, pink vibes with the heart, and black vibes with the lower abdomen. When to use it? When you have something that needs to get moving, a project, a relationship, an energetic block, feel your feels. Again, I look at opal like a deep dive. Whatever it is you want to deep dive into to bring to the surface, because it's very, it's a scorpionic stone. So again, opal comes in a lot of colors. If you need to dive deep into truth and communication, I would get an opal that has more like blue hues to it. If you need to get deep into your emotions and your heart space, I would get like a pinkish um, opal or like reddish kind of opal. They come in so many colors, it's not even funny. Um, yeah, or like, yeah, or if you need to get in that more of just creative flow, sexual flow, there's like orangish, reddish, there's like I said, there's blue, they even said there's black. So many different opals go with what feels right to you at the time, okay? Apophyllite. Apophyllite acts like a teleportation device to, play, ah, to places transcendent, often sourced from enchanted India, birthplace of Tantra, Yoga, oh, geez, I can't read, Nakshapa. Apophyllite clears skepticism, cynicism, and logic from the spiritual path. Who needs it? Anyone looking for that ray of light from on high to hit them with something good? Where to put it? Wherever you practice religion, meditate, channel, or pray. When to use it? Uh, when the spiritual light feels like a moving target. When you feel skeptical about your true purpose on earth. When you feel like you're eh, but thoughts are dishonoring the innermost you. Beam yourself up, way up, like I said. Will help with expansion. Will also help you to embrace and accept truth that you're coming into about yourself. And again, there's this need to like express it, express it, express it, express it. Most of that's going to be creative, and there's also going to be some conversations that really need to be had, but you're going to be communicating more effectively. And then we have the personal power stone, pyrite. That's how it's spelled for those who are really new. Okay. Pyrite, aka fool's gold, gold, is a metallic sulfide mineral. Its blinking, confident vibes and often perfect cubic structure aligns us with the nature's power to give energy to amazing, beautiful things like you. Who needs it? The chronically lethargic, anybody sleeping on their potential. Where to put it? Pyrite is often used near the solar plexus or will center, but it works wonders anywhere you need a little boost of masculine energy. For example, on the fellas, the Lolo abdomen, just saying. When to use it? On that romantic weekend away from the kids and wherever the energy to power through feels shrouded in dark matter. Call on your core power. Very nice. You are definitely a powerhouse Virgo in the month of December. Okay. So before we get into the tarot cards, I'm going to show you all the crystals one last time for those who like to write them down. If you're ready for the tarot card portion, just go into the timestamp. Lambertite. Blue Lace Agate. Malachite. Very common stone to get, should be easy to find. Golden healer is a little expensive, sometimes hard to find. Just know that. Um, I don't actually think you need this one specifically. I would go for a Copolite before I would get Golden Healer, actually. And Pirate should be easy to find as well. Opals can be expensive sometimes, depending on what kind you're getting and quality. Opal, Apophyllite, and Pyrite. 
And that's what they look like. Sort of. Some of these pictures are interesting because sometimes I look at them and it's like sometimes they're the raw form, but most people get tumbled form or vice versa, or it's like the color hue is a little different. I think maybe just because the way they took the pictures, but anyway. So opal, apophyllite, and pyrite over here. Okay. All right. Let's pull cards. So another fun little thing, factoid. I did the Leo monthly on my Patreon. I don't remember how many days ago. And I spilled water everywhere. And I ruined four of my decks because I was at the end of the reading. Almost ruined some Oracle decks too. I was so sad because they're decks that I use all the time and they're like the really classic ones. So I'm thinking about getting them replaced, but it forced me to pull out decks that I haven't used on any of my platforms. And actually ones that I, when I bought them, I was really drawn to them. And then I started working them. And I'm like, no, it doesn't feel right. So then I shelved them. And now that I'm working with them again, I'm like, oh, it's so the right time to use these. So it's funny how things happen, right? So... Let's get into it. Uh, and I am going to use one of the ones I haven't used before. The Book of Shadows Tarot. This is volume one. I actually got this in a shop here in Sedona um, over a year ago, actually. And yeah, it's just, it's a cool deck. It's very cool. It's got some extra cards too. Is the book one in here? Oh, did I get rid of the booklet? I was going to say, if like some of the cards come out that are extra, I'll just read it. But I don't have the book, apparently. So I'll just go with intuition. Okay, Virgo. Why do my Virgos need these crystals? For the month of December. <laughs> they just said November. Um, yeah, so some of you guys, this might, you might feel, uh, Ugh. Some of you guys might need these crystals even in November leading up to December. I just, I felt like November is like a ride for you, emotionally speaking. Yeah, it's almost like the more you get in this hermit, scorpionic, transformative period, the more, God, the more your external reality feels so much harder to deal with, so much more chaotic, so much more stressed out. I'm almost kind of getting like a lack of focus. Again, some of you are getting some activations, ascensions, upgrades, whatever word you want to use during this time as well, which can make that hard. There is a need to like be a little isolated when you're going through the thick of the thick of it. Excuse me. God, I just feel like everyone's waking up, man. Why do my birds all need these crystals for the month of December? One of my Virgos need these crystals for the month of December. Queen of Swords, which is Libra-like energy. And what is this? They also have different names for all the majors, so hold on a second. Justice. Oh, this is a very interesting Justice card. Also, what is that word? Mabon? Mabon. But it was in reverse, so I just wanted to show you guys upright. Yeah, again, Queen of Swords, that is expression, that is truth, and that is exactly what you're needing to embrace as you're coming out of this birth canal a little bit. Speaking on what hasn't been fair to you, what is not right in your life, how people haven't been right to you, it's like, again, you are going to be finding your balance in the new by embracing truth and expressing the truth being very, very clear about it. And like I said, you might be even having some hard conversations, especially with Queen of Swords and Justice in Reverse, right? That's some hard conversations about, hey, this ain't right, this ain't right, this ain't right, this ain't right, and here's what I'm gonna do to make it right for myself. <laughs> I do feel like you're taking control of situations here, but yeah, just watch the abrasiveness. This does feel a little bit like an abrasive energy. Hi, Clyde. Um, and like I said, I was picking that up before, but I think that could be a number of reasons because it's something that you are learning to, to evolve the way you communicate for some of you and others that there is some kind of shared anger about something. Um, for some of you, some very deeply rooted stuff. It could be in relation to family, friends, lovers, who, whoever, but you are really speaking your truth here, which is good. I like it. I'm trying to remember all, like, oh my god, that's so terrible. I'm like, 15, what's 15? 
Lamas is what it's called in this deck. It looks like the Hermit, but I know the Hermit's not 15, or is it? Shoot, now I'm like questioning. It feels very Hermit. Doesn't this look like the Hermit? <laughs> to me, that looks like the Hermit, but again, this is in reverse. Death. Is it this? No, it's not the star. Oh my God, that's so crazy that I can't. Okay, I, I gotta look. Let me look at one of my Jack decks here for 15. Oh, these aren't labeled in numbers. That's right. <laughs> Forgot. Hold on a second. It looks like the Hermit to me. It's screaming Hermit to me. 15. That must be a deck, I mean a deck, um, a card in tarot I don't normally resonate with myself. Yeah, I didn't think it was Temperance. I thought Temperance was 14. Oh, the devil. Oh, that is interesting. Okay, well, like I said, so that's a very interesting devil card. But anyway, Lamas. All right, so we have the devil in reverse. This to me screams the hermit, which is funny because Virgo, you are the hermit, right? And that's how I was feeling. Like you're having this like really intense, like deep, dark, scorpionic Virgo, isolated, transformative energy processing going on. And it's really liberating you. And so it does seem like it's liberating you from things that have been restricting you, relationships that have been restricting you, things that have been plaguing you, haunting you, all of that. So it is devil in reverse here, which is beautiful. Ooh, initiation in reverse. Sorry, I'm like, the, the illustrations on these cards are so amazing. I just love to look at them. So here, just I'll just have you look at them. Yeah, you're breaking some hard cycles here, especially with these two cards in reverse. You're breaking some major cycles that have been holding you back for some time. Some of you, this is like, a year cycle, some of you, this is like, you know, uh, like 30 year cycles. I love it though. I love it. You're speaking to somebody. Some of you, it's multiple people. Why else can I ever go through these crystals for the month of December? Three of Pentacles, and what is this? Ooh, Three of Pentacles and Nine of Wands in reverse. I love that. This is vulnerability. This is excitement, not letting the past baggage hold you back and really letting it go. Three of Pentacles can be working with people. It could be building new foundations, new relationships. Like I said, you're ready for new. You're ready to create, and you're ready to just speak your truth to whoever it is you need to speak. Oopsie. <laughs> Ready to speak your truth to whoever you need to speak it to and really getting away and breaking away from getting stuck in loops, getting stuck in cycles and not moving forward, not moving into the next evolved you, evolved version of yourself in whatever way that looks for you. Yeah, I'm just ready for it. What's underneath that is the crone of fire, which in this deck is actually the king of wands. Leo-like energy. Uh, and again, ready to take initiative. I love it. Some of you, this is about baggage that you've been carrying around because of a King of Wands energy, which can be um, like a boss. It can be a love interest. And if it's a love interest, it's someone who's very passionate, uh, someone who's very lusty, who's very fun, who's very adventurous, but like also very controlling at times, um, usually gets a lot of attention. Uh, King of Wands can also be like a father-like energy as well. So take all that as it resonates, but some of you, this is definitely about baggage you've been carrying around within your masculine energy as it has been affected by other masculine energies of the course of your life or in the course of one relationship in particular but i love it overall ooh, elemental of earth okay so here's another thing that's like different about this deck um they have these elemental cards so here we just have the element of earth which is you right virgo and it is in reverse which to me screams instability and needing to harness that eight of pentacles in reverse what hasn't been working Ooh. With the Five of Cups, oh, and then we get the Queen of um, Pentacles here, which is beautiful, with the Emperor and the Ten of Cups. Look at you! And then there's all this water, elements of water. 
Very nice. I love it. So yeah, Virgo, you speaking this truth, it's like you've been you've been in a dark place. You've been kind of stuck here for a while. Uh, with Eight of Pentacles in reverse and the Five of Cups, you haven't been that grounded. Um, you haven't been that stable. You haven't been that confident. And this is stuff you've been processing in this whole little dark Scorpionic Virgo transition period. And in this masculine energy, which is beautiful, we have the Queen of Pentacles with the Emperor. Do you feel like this is your energy taking action, taking initiative, letting your masculine energy kind of come into the fold a little bit to embrace happiness. Ten of cups with the element of water. There's all that water energy I was picking up, but that's awesome. I love it. I love it. I'm also getting a regret. What is this? Oh, regret that someone couldn't live up to what you needed emotionally. Um, this wounding around masculine energy within yourself and as it relates to one person in particular or a pattern of dealing with masculine energies, people we perceive as masculine, um, there's almost like this disappointment of like that they haven't been able to like go up to your standard or be held to your standard. Um, like you wanted an emperor, you wanted more emperor energy in your life and you just haven't gotten that. So instead of, you know, dwelling on the regret that someone couldn't live up to what you needed emotionally, you just took on that emperor energy yourself and made yourself happy. <laughs> I love it. Because I mean, sometimes our reality is a reflection of what's going on internally, right? Where it's like, we want these external energies to be more masculine or be more emperor-like when really we just need to take that on for ourselves. And that's exactly what you're doing. And you're dropping this baggage of wounding around masculine energy. There's going to be a theme for everybody. And it is through some kind of like speaking of truth here. Okay. Wow. Look at you. I like, I can't get over this happiness. Look at that. The Ten of Cups and the Element of Water. Very nice, Virgo. Very nice. Okay, Virgos. I hope that was helpful and insightful. Congratulations and embrace this happiness and truth that you're going to be living in. It, God, especially with this energy, it's like really um, being done away with these, with like getting stuck in the same cycle. You're not going to repeat the same cycle over and over and over and over again anymore, especially with these two majors. It just seems like a lot of karmic lessons that you've had to be exposed to over and over and over again because you weren't learning them or you were getting stuck in this whole like, well, this masculine energy disappointed me, this masculine energy disappointed me, this masculine energy disappointed me when really you just had to be more masculine yourself. And you're realizing that, you're learning that, you're taking a lot of initiative and action in your life. And that's beautiful. So no more of that. No more loop-de-loop, round the merry-go-round on the karmic wheel. <laughs> All right, Virgos, I love you. Take care. If you're leaving us here, don't forget to check out Vimeo on Patreon. Everything else you need is linked below for your convenience. And yeah, if you're sticking around, I'll see you soon. Have a good night, guys. Namaste. Hey, guys. Let's go ahead and do the second spread. Uh, who's going next? Capricorn or Taurus? Capricorn or Taurus? Virgo, you had your turn. Get out. <laughs> I don't know why. I just want Virgo creep in again. Um, it is sister energy, so it's not surprising. Capricorn or Taurus? Capricorn, we're going to go with you. I almost like want to pull you out of the corner. I don't know what that's about. Does someone show you the corner? I like, I just... That's exactly how it just felt. That was so weird. Almost like Capricorn, come here. Like Capricorn, come into the spotlight a little bit. Capricorn, Capricorn, Capricorn. Um, Capricorn, there's a need to kind of venture out for some reason or to be in the spotlight a little bit. I feel like you're tired. <laughs> I feel like you're tired. I feel like you're like, oh, please leave me alone. Oh, please let me just lay in bed. Capricorns have been saying this for a while. You guys have had quite a ride with all of this Capricorn energy. That's been going on for a while now, years now. Um, Jupiter and Saturn will be moving into Aquarius. Thank goodness. I know you're going to be excited about that. And I know you're really going to feel that. Um, as Saturn and Jupiter shift into Aquarius, you might notice a little change or opportunity um, going on in your life, especially wherever, whatever house um, Capricorn rules for you. Okay, so I would just check that personally. So if it's like, if it's your first house, it's going to be some kind of epiphany about yourself, about your identity, um, your purpose, your soul, that sort of thing. Um, but of course, you know, not everyone's a Capricorn rising, so check your houses. Yeah, Capricorn, I just, I feel like rest, 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 rest. 
But um, like almost all of a sudden you're getting a lot of attention though. Like while you're trying to rest and recover, um, yeah, it feels very like four swords to me. Like, oh, please let me just lay in bed. Um, people are wanting more attention from you and I feel like you are gonna be getting opportunities. Face yourself, nothing wrong with facing yourself, but I do feel like you're not gonna wanna miss some of these opportunities, okay? Oh, okay. So crystals are good for my Capricorns for the month of December. Oh, happy birthday, Capricorns, sorry. <laughs> for my December Gappies, happy birthday. Some of you have stayed this course with being really busy. If it's like, if you started doing something really new, You've really stayed that course and I think it's been really good for you. But for those of you where it's like, you've been on like, like struggle, 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 struggle. Um, I feel like you're just being quiet. I feel like you're just like, I, I just need a rest. Like almost like you even sequestered work because you needed such a rest. Because some of you feel, I feel that deep, deep, deep physical recovery. But I am getting this other group of Capricorns, like who's tried some new things recently or have tried some, like when I say recently, you know, I'm October, I just heard October, uh, you're really finding a lot of joy in that. Just make sure you are pacing yourself and still taking care of yourself. What crystals are good for my Capricorns for the month of December? Ooh, very nice. Mukai Jasper, very grounding stone. Also a stone that's really great for your dream space experiences. I'm glad this is out here. Sometimes I look at this stone a little bit like a shamanic stone because it does help with astraling. Um, it does help with remembering your dreams as well. It also helps with finding purpose and it's earthy, it's Jasper. So it's very grounding at the same time. I feel a slow movement with you, Capricorn. I think the first half of December is going to feel really slow for you. And I think like, the last bit of December, early January, like, like massive energy shift, massive momentum. So take the first half of December to rest. I feel slow with this. I do. I feel like a sluggish, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to lay in bed for a couple hours. I'm going to go back to sleep. Ooh, I just had a cool dream and then writing it down and then getting up. But like, like slow movement, but you're having healing and you're having some sense of growth and progress. I do feel like you're getting some inspiration as well. And you're like writing things down. It feels really slow. Like I said, I feel like that last half of December, more like last week, there's a sudden shift with you. Probably wouldn't we have full moon in cancer, your, your counterpart, so to speak. But yeah, I, I love this. I love this for you. Oh, they're highlighting the number three rose quartz. Ooh, a smoky graphics quartz. Okay. Cappies, I do feel for some of you, this is a, like some self-love stuff coming in here. Um, definitely some heart healing. And it's interesting, that's an interesting combination, rose quartz and, and smoky quartz. Because smoky quartz I see is like a spiritual warrior sort of stone, like um, needing to kind of like amp up your shielding, but also amp up your confidence. Um, it's really interesting. I do feel like you're going to have some unexpected heart healing going on here. But why do, like, why do I feel this like warrior like energy with it? Some of you guys have had a little bit of a warrior mentality when it comes to love and just connect, just connecting. Thank you. Just connecting with people. You've had a little bit of a warrior sort of pathology kind of going on. So just be mindful of that. I do think you're going to be healing this and transmuting this during this time, especially when you start getting in offers and invites. I'm hearing invite actually. Um, to go out, do things, or to connect with people. I feel such a resistance. I do feel like in your head, you're like, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. I keep hearing that. But I feel like what it is, is like, you're too tired to be the warrior that you're used to being. You're too tired to be the armored, shielded sort of individual. And that's come from pain. That's come from being hurt. That's come from having, you know, not so great experiences with people. Capricorns, you have big hearts. And so when your big heart gets damaged, you 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 kind of take on that, energy and that's really what it is it's not that you're you're 
too tired to connect with people. You're too tired to be the armored warrior with people. That's really what it is. This might be a really good challenge for you in this time to just sort of embrace these opportunities to connect with people. It feels really good. Yeah, it's almost like you're like a gentility is coming over you in December. If you just kind of take this day by day, but that's what it is. You're just too tired to be the warrior. Not too tired to connect. You're just too tired to be shielded from people when you're connecting with them. What other stones are good for my Capricorns for the month of December? Citrine. Citrine doesn't really look like this. Citrine looks more like this. Like this is the citrine. It's like, it's a lot more brown. This is kind of interesting that this one's like so orange. Not to say that it's a different quality. I'll say it that way. But citrine is about making shit happen. It's a stone of abundance. It's a stone of work, getting things going, getting things revving. It's also a stone that really helps to inspire, uh, which again, I keep getting like little bursts of inspiration with you. Yeah, actually Capricorn, I feel like this aqua energy is going to be good because it's like, I feel like some guys have had a lot of trouble with relationships <laughs> the last couple of years specifically. Um, a lot of issues being vulnerable, opening your heart, and on top of it, you've probably been getting hammered by just this trifecta of Capricorn energy. These stones are really saying to me that like trying to encourage you, like, yes, take this time to recover, but also take this time to connect with people in a much more vulnerable way, in a much more transparent way. You don't need your armor. You don't need to be the warrior. And there might be some really cool, inspiring conversations and connections that you make. It might even really help you with your work. And I keep getting this like new, renewed sense of inspiration and like renewed work energy and like I said some of you have already done like the new work thing or new hobby thing and you're on that train but especially with citrine being out here you might get unexpected opportunities with work or some or um, unexpected opportunities to be creative with people at this time hey come here hold on guys here you go you want to lay down thank you okay there you go oh you're so cute okay all right See what else wants to come out for you, Cappies. You might even make some very unexpected spiritual relationships. And what do I mean by that? Um, not necessarily strictly work or strictly friends or strictly romance, like like spiritual, like spiritually evolved connections where you might even be talking about spirituality. You might be very philosophical with, with this kind of person um yeah it just it's a different kind of energy it's like it's not strictly let's go out and have fun it's not strictly let's get down to business like like a yeah I just keep getting a spiritual relationship again it doesn't have to be romantic or anything just spiritual I feel like something about actually meeting a mentor which is kind of cool now we have, oh, wow, Rainbow Mayanai and Golden Healer. As I said, mentor after spiritual relationship. Holy crap. <laughs> wow. Oh, Cappies, get ready. Yeah, I, I just, I feel heavy mentor with this. I wouldn't be shocked if we get the hair font when we do your tarot cards. But yeah, Rainbow Mayanai is a stone of healing, but it's also a stone of ascension. That's why they call it Rainbow Mayanai. It's also really hard to find. I do, I did finally get a piece Took me forever to find um, uh, a mine to get. I actually had to like, you know, get it from a mine uh, to get a hold of it. But anyway, um, both of these lean towards. Some people say Christ, the term Christ consciousness. You can you can say that um, higher free like tapping, being able to handle tapping in and being connected to higher frequencies. Because it's not that you're not connected to it. It's like being aware that you're connected to it, right? And just going higher and higher and higher in that awareness. I keep feeling mentor with this. Some of you guys this might be in the form of like a guide. You might be getting a new prominent guide. And if you're not really aware of your guides, just know that that might be happening in the background. But I feel mentor. I do. I feel mentor. And it's going to be inspiring. It's going to give you new ideas. It's going to really change like your, what you do like for hobbies and maybe even for work. And it's going to be very healing for you. But you have to be you have to be open to having these new experiences because I keep getting, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. Again, it's not that you're tired. Some of you guys are physically tired, emotionally tired, but it's like you're too tired to be the shielded warrior that you're used to being with people. And this requires you not to be that. So you can take these opportunities and I suggest you do. This, they're drawing you back here to Mukite Jasper. Some of you guys might be having 
prophetic visions of this mentor in these relationships. I feel almost like for some of you, that's going to be kind of a new thing for you, like getting information on people ahead of time. There's a name for that ability. Um, but it feels like in the form of visions, like all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, I've seen your face before. <laughs> um, I think it's called clairsentience, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, so a lot of cool stuff going on here. Not, not to mention on the bottom, we have a zestulite, another one for connecting to really high frequencies and expansion and all of that stuff. Yeah, I, yeah. Oh, Capricorns, get ready. I just, yeah, this Aquarian energy, it's like connect, 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 connect and build, connect and build, connect and build. And I think the community aspect of Aquarian energy, you're going to really love to incorporate in your hobbies or what you do in your free time or even your work, which is going to be awesome. All right. Again, you don't have to get all these crystals. They're just recommendations. People ask me that all the time. I'm not sponsoring anybody or anything. Up to you to make those choices for yourself. What other crystals are great for my cappies for December? What other crystals are great for my cappies for December? slash physical sensation. All of a sudden, it felt like I was having a drip reaction in my mouth. I haven't eaten anything today, so I know it can't be me. Um, and I just saw, like, I don't know if they're beets. It's something really red, really red. <clears throat> this has to be a challenge for somebody out there. Um, I think you're going to have an allergic reaction. It does feel like it's to beets. Like, it's, like, I'm just seeing red, and it's, like, all of a sudden, like, my mouth is, like, tingly, and, like, doesn't feel right. Um, like my tongue in the roof of my mouth, I, like that's coming in for somebody. Please be aware. <laughs> Please be, yeah, there's, yeah, they just showed it to me, like coming, like the, the root vegetable, right, coming out of the ground, like the way it's shaped. It's a beet. So be mindful of beets. <laughs> I have no idea who this is for. Um, you might find you're unexpectedly allergic, okay? Um, it's interesting because I'm like, sorry, it's freaking me out. Sorry. Um, it's interesting because beets are really high in iron. Is that why you're eating them? You might be eating them because, um, oh, <laughs> it's freaking me out. You might be eating them because you're low on iron. I would try something else. I would try something else. Oh, hopefully that feeling goes away. Anyway. What crystals are good for my Capricorns for December? One more. <clears throat> What crystals are good for my Capricorns for December? <laughs> I guess her boss. <laughs> I love my guys. Sometimes they're so funny. Boss. Again, I keep getting this mentor energy. You know what? You might be becoming a mentor for somebody, for some of you. Yeah, some of you might be becoming a mentor to somebody, but I feel like for the most part, you're getting a mentor unexpectedly. Um, I feel like they're actually teaching you that in some ways. Because like Capricorns, you have very boss-like energy in general, but it's almost like how to be a more evolved boss or like an evolved manager. Um, it just feels like next level. Everyone's kind of getting this next level energy, at least as far as the earth signs are concerned. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Obsidian, of course. Um, boss, there's, there's that warrior energy. I feel like with these two coming out, the smoky quartz and the obsidian, um, I feel like that will help you to feel energetically shielded like a warrior without emotionally being the warrior, if that makes any sense. <clears throat> and then we have uh, Hiddenite, which I love. That's a very light heart. Yeah, lighthearted coming out right next to the shielding, <laughs> right next to the shielding stone. Yeah, I feel like this like getting laxed a little bit as far as like how you are emotionally connecting with people. Yeah, smoky quartz and obsidian will help you feel energetically protected without having to emotionally warrior like protect yourself and just kind of enjoy the moment a little bit more. I do feel you being more like opening up and as time goes on, I'm actually here in January. In January, I might be really receptive to people. I actually just heard someone, that's interesting, probably this mentor. 
I just heard age doesn't matter. Hmm. Vital clue there. <laughs> for someone who needs to hear that. What other crystals are good for my Capricorns for December? They keep pushing me to January. Like pushing, pushing, pushing. Yeah, January is going to feel like a rocket. I do feel like it's because of pulmonary cancer. Is this rose quartz? Yep, that's what I thought. <laughs> so rose quartz came out twice for you, Capricorns. Again, I do feel like it's really about just not emotionally being a warrior when you're connecting with people. You can be a warrior. You can be a boss. Some of you guys are really honing your boss-like skills. Um, but you don't have to be the emotional warrior. You don't. You don't. It makes it hard to connect with people that way. All right, so let's read these off. Obsidian. Obsidian is a black volcanic glass before the internet, before AI, before kitten, kitten food delivering drones. Like way back, early homo sapiens were getting it done with obsidian tools. Capable of holding an extremely sharp edge, obsidian scalpels are used in surgeries today. People who need it, anyone looking to cut out negative people and patterns from their lives, Scorpios. Where to put it in your pocket like a concealed weapon against bad vibes, when to use it, when thinking positively seems out of the question, uh, when dark forces are at work, digging in, arm yourself with obsidian and throttle back, protect your soul. Again, I feel like it's to help you be energetically protected without emotionally guarding yourself, okay? Then we have Hidden Night, which I think is going to help you stay very laxed in, these con in this whole like, connecting with people. Uh, let's see, a variety of, oh, spodamine. Uh, Hidden Night's green aura emanates the warm and fuzzies. If you tap into the stone's frequency and feel the buzz, you must have a big heart. Use it. Must have a big heart, Cappies. We know you do. Uh, who needs it? French existentialist, future trippers, and bad romantics. Where to put it? Hidden Night, like its cuddly pink cousin, Kunzite, should be aimed at the heart. When to use it? When you find yourself stuck in the past or too focused on the future, Hidden Night is down to make the most of every moment. If you're in a rut, call on Hidden Night to help you love your way out of it. Claim your happy place. Like I said, it's to help you kind of mellow out as you're connecting with people and just sort of enjoy it, okay? And take it for, for what it is. Rose quartz, you guys know rose quartz? Rose quartz is love in rock form. People who need it, the overly self-critical, sentient spiritual beings who love deeply, those in the healing arts are those who want to be where to put it in spaces you want to zone safe and sacred held with both hands to your heart with the utmost loving kindness when to use it when you feel like you always have to be the one to have it all figured out to work the hardest to hold it all together for everyone else rose quartz gives a pink cashmere covered platform to be soft sweet and open to spirit take care of your heart okay all right cappy so if you're ready for the tarot reading go ahead and look at the timestamp. i'm going to go over all of these for those who like to write them down okay Mukite Jasper, and it was kind of a funky spelling on that one. Rose Quartz, graphic smoky quartz, but regular smoky quartz will do. I actually, actually suggest regular smoky quartz. Citrine, definitely a good one to get, especially when you're feeling inspired. I would definitely get some citrine. Now, again, these two are really hard to find. I think it's really just to really indicate the kind of mentorship you're coming into, whether you're being a mentor or you're getting a mentor. And again, it feels like a very spiritual relationship. When I say relationship, I don't mean romantic. It might have a romantic component for some of you, but it's gonna come in different contexts for you guys. But a very spiritual connection is coming in here. And then we have Obsidian, Hiddenite, and Rose Quartz. Again, this is to help you be, to feel comfortable energetically with people, but to not be emotionally guarded. Okay, and just kind of enjoy the moment, all right? Hiddenite, Obsidian, and Rose Quartz. Okay, Cappies, let's do some tarot. So I mentioned this with uh, Virgo. I did Virgo already. Uh, I, I ruined four of my decks. <laughs> I spilled water when I was doing the Leo monthly reading on Patreon, and I was very devastated and very lucky I didn't ruin more. But they are like my classic go-to ones, so I'm a little bummed. So I pulled some out uh, from where I've shelved decks before. Um, so I might use them with you. Actually, which ones, do I, what deck do I feel for you, Cappies? Hmm. 
No, I'm not going to go there. I was stuck. I almost did. That almost fell. Oh, actually. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to use a deck called the Ibis deck. I think it was made in the 70s. Um, I got it on Amazon. I don't know if they still have them. At least I think I got it. I don't know. Maybe I didn't get it on Amazon. Not super easy to find, actually. Um, it's really, sorry, little story time. A friend of mine saw, oh, and here's the card, saw, I think it was a picture on Instagram or Twitter, and she sent it to me, and it was this card. And I looked at it, and I was like, I need that deck. I need it now. Um, unfortunately, it didn't come with a booklet, I don't think, and so there are extra cards in here, and they're not the typical, like, names, and so I might just have to go intuitive on this one, so just so you know, and they have extra cards as well that are not in tarot. Um, it's what happens when you buy older decks. But anyway, yeah, let's use this. One of my Capricorns and these crystals from the month of December. One of my Capricorns and these crystals from the month of December. Why do I make Capricorn for these crystals from like December? Patient. I'm, you're meeting someone very patient. Um, or you're dealing with people who are very patient. I feel like it's a significant connection. I feel like it's this mentor, spiritual sort of connection. And I'm getting a lot of patience. I am. A lot of patience from them, not necessarily from you. And I feel like, if, yeah, they must be very intuitive because I think they're, they're sensing your <laughs> emotional warriorism in connecting with people. And they're being patient. I'm hearing cracks of light. They can see like cracks of, that's gonna sound so bad saying it like that. So imagine like a shield, your emotional shield, your warrior emotional shield. Imagine it in front of you. They can see your light. Like they can see like your soul kind of creeping through the cracks of the shield here. And I think it's like keeping them uh, intrigued. All right, what do we have here? We've got Typhoon. This looks like the devil. So devil in reverse, also known as Typhoon in this deck. Just so you guys can see. I know these guys are so cool, right? Anyway, so devil in reverse, Capricorn energy. And this is, ooh, King of Cups in reverse. Devil in reverse. Yeah, see? Mm -hmm. King of Cups in reverse is emotionally guarded, <laughs> right? They are not allowing like emotional connections to take place. But again, this is you breaking that with Devil in reverse. Um, yeah, learning to break that, learning to kind of transform out of that. And I feel like you're getting assistance with connecting with people in general because I feel a lot of that going on for you. But like one significant like connection keeps coming up here in assisting you with that. It feels a little bit like divine timing. Like you're supposed to deal with this person at this time to deal with a specific issue. Okay. All right. Yeah, this like emotional warriors and warriorism, I don't know what else to call it, has thrown you. Capricorn. Um, oh God, how do I say this? Um, like it feels like for some of your compass has been off. Almost like when you go to your 3D realm, like work, household, organization, logistics, your compass is thrown, but it's because this emotional part of you um, ne needs attention, okay? Why else do my Capricorns do these crystals from the month of December? Oh, that's too many. Oh, that's too many, sorry. Why else do my Capricorns need these crystals from the month of December? Oh, how funny. I thought I, I got a peeker. Queen. Queen of Swords in reverse. Uh, yeah, Queen of Swords in reverse. That's a lack of clarity. 
some confusion going on here. I feel like you've been having miscommunications with people. And so like, this is, I think, leading up to December. This feels kind of old. So you kind of like have just not spoken. Like you just kind of like, just withdrawn your communication. I feel like some kind of fogginess or cloudiness has come up with people. Yeah, and it's just kind of like, I just won't say anything anymore. <laughs> I'm just gonna take myself out of the situation. Some of you have cut out people because of this confusion. Not saying that's a bad thing. For some of you, it definitely is a good thing because they were actually causing confusion in your life, causing imbalance in your life. But some of you might be revisiting some of these connections here. Because for some, the confusion was more on your end than necessarily theirs. What else can my Capricorns like these crystals from the December? Like you've had it with somebody what is this this feels old too this feels old but it's on your mind in december again this might be a connection you guys are revisiting i feel yeah fed up fed up fed up i heard same old story same old story same old story sick of this person's energy sick of the yeah it's like you're, some of you've been dealing with this is not for everybody but some of you've been dealing with someone again this feels more like maybe like summer it's feeling summer, fall, like almost that transition period, like August, September-ish. Um, it's like this person can't get out of their own way. Some For some of you, this person just keeps going in the same cycle over and over and over, and they try to drag you into it. For some of you, and you've had it, but for some reason, this is coming up in December. They're, you're either hashing something out with them one last time. I heard final. That's for some of you, or that they're just on your mind because you're working through some stuff. Ha! <laughs> like, we just came out. <laughs> the lovers. Balance. And in this deck in particular, you can even see in the illustration, it's about making the right decision. The best decision. Coming in next to the Queen of Swords in reverse. So like I said, some of you have like needed to cut some people out, but this is you really needing to make sure that you make the right choice about something. And I feel like this is actually in relation to that spiritual connection I was feeling. Yeah, again, I feel like they came in your life at this time for a reason and you're having trouble like embracing this person. And it's because of this like emotional warriorism that I keep feeling with you. Because again, it throws your compass off. It throws your compass off. You're having trouble deciding this, but I think you're gonna make the right choice in the end. Overall, we have, ooh, whoa, okay, kind of wands. Nice, and then the Ace of Swords. Yeah, you're you're seeing the reality of what this emotional warriorism has done to you um, and how it affects you. And again, it's because of this person, I can feel it. And again, others of you, you're also cutting away anything that's been holding you back or burdening you or actually enabling this emotional warriorism and some of you that's going to be the relationships you're revisiting, especially this like person that keeps coming up. I can feel it for some of you. Same old story, same old story, same old story. Ugh. Be done with it. Be done with it. Be done with it. Making this choice towards this uh, spiritual connection means cutting out the bullshit, cutting out what doesn't work because it's almost like Again, it's like this mentor sort of energy. You're learning that you need to level up and this person showing you the level you could be at. It's almost like wherever they're at vibrationally, you're going to be matching them. It's almost a little bit like a challenge. And again, that can be vice versa. You could be doing this for somebody, okay? Underneath that, we have Queen of Cups in reverse. Now we have the King and Queen of Cups. Again, more of this like emotional warriorism. Now, the fact that we do have a king of cups, a queen of cups, and a queen of swords, there could be a third party situation here, especially with the devil being here and the lovers for those where that applies, where you're going to have to cut someone out because they're just, they're with the devil. You can make the right choice here and someone's encouraging you to do that. Divine's encouraging you to do that. Some of you, it's your higher self. Some of you, it's a spiritual connection you have is encouraging you to make the right choices when it comes to people. So take all this as it resonates, but this is beautiful Capricorn. Getting away from the burdens, getting away from the shit that doesn't work, closing it out once and for all, and just seeing what does work, seeing the level you could be at and rising to the challenge. And I feel a lot of inspiration coming from that as well. Beautiful. I love it. 
Plus, I ain't let go of control. Yeah, let go of control, let go of control, let go of control. Some of you, this emotional warriorism comes from this like need to control situations, maybe even control them emotionally. And sometimes maybe that come out that might come off as like emotionally manipulative for some of you. Again, take that as it resonates. It's not gonna be for everybody, but you're also realizing that's part of your emotional warriorism that just doesn't serve you when it comes to connecting with people. And again, there's like this energy of connecting with people in this time that's gonna be opening doors, opening a very blessed path, a very blessed path. And one of mentorship and leveling up. How could you say no to that? So yeah, you're going to be learning a lot, but it looks good. All right. So Cappies, if you're leaving us here, don't forget to check out the meal on Patreon. I still have to do Taurus next, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. Yeah, I'm going to do Taurus next. Um, yeah, I hope you guys got a lot out of it. And I hope you guys have a really good night and I'll see you soon. Namaste. Hey, Taurians, welcome to the last reading of the December uh, crystal channeling reading. So, Taurus, let's see what's going on with you. Starting with the Crystal Wisdom Healing Oracle deck. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'm hearing the word support. It almost feels like you're being called on. Are you not liking it? It feels like you're, you're being called on to be background for someone in the way of support. Like, yeah, it feels very masculine to me. Excuse me. Yeah, it feels very, very, very masculine to me. Um, like someone's needing your help or you're just needing to show up for other people. I can't tell if you're digging it though or not, to be honest, or if it just is like an obligation. Well, crystals are good for my Torians, the month of December. it's positive I like god I can feel it it's like you, you like you almost don't feel anything for it you're very shut off it's almost like whatever it is you're being called on to do you're being very emotionally detached about it well crystals are good for my Torians for the month of December Crystals are good for my Torians for the month of December. Rhodozite. Okay. Yeah, so that's interesting because Rhodozite, Rhodozite is a very earthy support system kind of stone. It's to help, like, it's to help make things balance. It's to help taking, like, negative environments, um, land that has bad energy and just like grounding the shit out of it. So yeah, you are being called on to act as a support system, a pillar, so to speak. And that's going to help you have the strength to do so, especially if it's like a negative environment, but you're very emotionally detached from it. I can feel it. Hmm. What other... Okay, there's a lot that just came out and they said take it. So I'll take that as a batch. What other crystals? All right, so now we have Bumblebee Jasper, another grounding stone to ground shit out. There's a lot of resilience that I'm getting with this. Yeah, it's like whether you're female or, or, or male or whatever you identify as, as a gender, like you are needing to be very masculine energetically and show the fuck up and like be that pillar of strength. I'm getting a lot of resilience off of that. Ooh, here comes the higher chakra energy. Uh, we have Flint with Purpurite. I just heard Curse. Soulmate. What? And a Zestulite. This is giving me the chills. I almost called you Virgo. Good deal with the Virgo. Ooh. I'm just getting like, like insight bombs with you. Like having these bombs of insight and there is a cleaning happening here with Purpurite. I'm hearing curse, 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 which is weird. It's very weird. Um, this, this might be in the realm of family or with a romantic partner because it's almost like the way you have to show up, again, you're being very emotionally detached, but how do I say it? It's like whatever you're doing is gonna help clear out some shit. 
that needs to be cleared out between you and another person or for yourself. It all, yeah, it almost feels like going to a connection or helping someone um, that's going to finally help to break you of something that you've experienced over and over in your life that feels like a curse, like it feels like a cursed pattern. This is going to help you be unified in your energy. It's going to help you expand. Some of you, it's going to cause an ascension. <laughs> I'm just like, whoa. But it's interesting the way you're coming in because you're coming into it emotionally detached, kind of like very like, let's just do it. I'll just do it. I'll just do it. I'll just do it. Maybe you're something a tiny bit resentful because it feels like it's intruding your life or disrupting your life in some way. Um, but it's going to clear out some serious shit for you and maybe even for someone else. I think you're going to be very shocked by the end of it. It's happening for a reason. This event, whatever you're being called on to do, it's for a reason. And it's, it's honestly for your own good. It feels like a massive karmic cleanup is how it feels. And it's kind of being forced upon you. It's almost like, I can't think of a movie right now, but there's like this archetype of movie where it's like, you know, someone's shoved into a situation they don't want to be in and they got to help someone. They're like, I don't want to be here, but I'm just doing this for the money or I'm just doing this because I was told or whatever. I'm here because of the con or whatever. And then at the end of it, they realize so much about themselves and they realize that they can do so much for this person. They're seeing this person in a new light. They see themselves in a new light and they release all this old shit and old baggage. Like it's like, it's that kind of typical archetypal movie sort of energy that I'm getting with this. Wow. Okay. Especially with Flint. Flint is like a very plutonic, scorpionic stone. Made, yeah, oh God, especially with purple, right? I keep hearing the word curse, 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 curse. Curse is going to be like broken. It's like, that's such a dramatic way of saying that. Yeah, it's whatever deep, dark thing inside of you has been lurking. And it's like this, this, uh, this helping someone or being called to do something, even if you're detached from it or even resentful of it, it's just going to bring it to the surface to be dealt with and transmuted. And some of you, it might even bring in someone. It might even be a catalytic relationship or situation. Others of you, it's just going to help you be very unified in your energy. Wow. Okay, Taurus. Uh, let's pull some more cards. Using this deck now. <laughs> okay. What other crystals are good for my Taurians for the month of December? What other crystals are good for my Taurians for the month of December? Some of this is going to be with family. You're going to, you're probably going to help clear out some like family shit, <laughs> family baggage that has caused you to have like a bad cycle, just repeat over and over and over and over again. What are the crystals are good for my Taurians for the month of December? I'm not taking those, that was a lot. What are the... Fine, I'll take this one. Uh, opal, very nice. Opal, again, another scorpionic stone. And Scorpio is your natural counterpart. So you're kind of digging into aspects of yourself that you don't readily use, which is your counterpart energy, which is Scorpio. Opal is like a deep diver. Um, and again, that's kind of what I was getting already. It's like there's something lurking deep inside of you that's going to be brought out in this situation to finally be dealt with and be cleansed. And again, I keep hearing the word curse, which I feel like is a little dramatic. That is what I'm hearing. Wait, I couldn't see it for a second. Woo! <laughs> oh, looks like you guys got tech tight. Jesus. Oh, Taurus, you're going to be so different by the end of this situation. So let's see. Now we have... Lapis lazuli and obsidian. I okay, so Taurus, don't get mad at me. I'm just a messenger. I feel like whatever this deep digging up is, it might even feel a little bit like an awakening or a dark night of the soul because I'm getting ego all of a sudden is being addressed. And again, ego is not necessarily 
bad. I mean, it's it's useful in like 3D, 4D sort of energies. Um, won't get into that, that's a whole other video. But we are in a 5D physical reality, right? And so it's like there is needing to be aware of when you kind of get dragged into those energies of ego and those lower frequencies, like why that's happening, right? That's a big thing for a lot of people is to become aware of it. Um, I feel like that's why these two stones are out here. Obsidian is also a protector stone. So it's, it's like kind of like a powerhouse stone. It is for protection, clearing out negative energies as well. Uh, super powerful stuff. I, I just feel like whatever's coming up from deep inside of you and being brought to the surface, it does relate to some wounding that has contributed to maybe some egoistic tendencies, ego-driven behaviors, reactions, triggers, wounding, that sort of stuff, okay? Then we have Hiddenites, which I like this, that that's coming out here. Who was that Hiddenite? I think it was Capricorn. Capricorn also had Hiddenite. Hiddenite's like a keep shit cool sort of stuff. Uh, as things are like, as chaos is going on and it's like you're kind of, your mind's all over the place, it's to help you like get really centered and just be in the moment. Which I think is good because I, I feel a little bit of an escapism here. Because you're being called upon to do something that again, you're like, are emotionally detaching from or resentful or both and it's causing this deep deep shit to come up and I feel like you might try to avoid that I do I feel escapism with this I feel like you might try to avoid it and so like your mind might be all over the place trying not to think about whatever's coming up or trying not to feel whatever's coming up here but hidden it will help you with that okay for those who want to embrace this and then we have yep tectite and labradite Ooh. Labradite's also a stone that's going to help you with change and transformation. It's also a stone that's really good for the throat chakra. I'm actually wearing one right now. Um, helps you with the throat chakra. It helps you to embrace your truth and expressing your truth through changes, through periods of transformation and to be resilient in the face of that. Tektite's cool. Tektite is a meteorite, um, which actually opens you up to more like, high, like galactic Um sort of stuff so yeah honestly Taurus this feels like a ride and this feels very masculine to me like I said so this could pertain to someone you know or someone you're connected to you guys know how energy readings work you guys got a lot of crystal stores um yeah I feel like you're coming in emotionally detached uber masculine which uber masculine is not bad I love masculine energy coming in very masculine to be a support system but you're being emotionally detached from it or borderline resentful and whatever the situation is oh it's gonna challenge you it's gonna wake you up it's going to expand you. It's going to dig shit up from the deep, dark depths of Taurus. Um, yeah. And you might have some very out there sort of experiences with this. Okay. Especially if it triggers an ascension, activation, that sort of thing. Especially with Tektite being here, that screams galactic to me specifically. Okay. Wow. All right. So if you guys are ready for the tarot reading, go ahead to the timestamp. There's a lot of crystals here and I'm going to show them all to you. You don't necessarily need to get all these crystals. Please only take what resonates, including whatever crystals come out. Don't go out and buy all these crystals just because they came out in the reading. Okay. Actually, these came out together, so I'll show them together. Rhodozite and Bumblebee Jasper. And if this does trigger an awakening or an ascension or anything like that, because for some of you, I definitely think it's going to, be as grounded as you can be, okay? Use that earthy Taurian energy and ground the shit out of yourself, <laughs> all right? Flint and Perperite. Soulmate and Azestulite. Azestulite can be kind of expensive. Soulmate crystals are like, they're, they're like a type of crystal. It's like a formation of a crystal. Do I have one over here? No, I don't. Um, so, for example, you can have, like, a malachite chrysocolla soulmate crystal. It's, like, two crystals that are, are fused together or, like, merging one from the other because um, there are a lot of sister crystals that have the same molecular structure, which is why you can get these kind of soulmate crystals, all right? So look around for what, you know, jives with you if you do want to get one of those. They're really cool. Opal. Oh, I didn't. I just realized I didn't read any of these. Um, there's a lot to read. <laughs> Taurus, I mean, God, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six descriptions. And I'd love to save my voice, but they have like little blurbs on the bottom. So I'll read all the blurbs. So opal is how that's spelled. This is what it looks like. Feel all your feels. Again, opal is like a deep diver and it comes in all kinds of colors. So again, go with whatever color resonates for you. Then we have lapis lazuli, which is beautiful, and obsidian. Obsidian is really common, should be easy to find. 
um, lapis lazuli, ascend your rightful throne. Again, I feel like that's to address the ego. And then protect your soul is obsidian. Opal, lapis lazuli, obsidian. Then we have hiddenite. Claim your happy place. Tactite, that's how it looks. It's a meteorite, it's very cool. Raise your vibration. And the labradite, also very cool. It's very pretty, actually. This picture does not do it justice. Uh, protect your magic, okay? Hiddenite, tectite, labradite. And again, I'm going to show you the spellings one last time, and then we're going to go ahead and get to the reading. Jeez, okay. Taurus, God, I almost want to use the shadow deck for you, but it's giant. I mean, it's like, it's freaking huge. It's a book. <laughs> really hard to handle, so I'm not going to. Um, Taurus, Taurus, Taurus for December. Okay. We're going to use the scent and wear the deck. of these crystals for the month of December. I'm hearing Mars. Uh, oh. Oh, that's right. I forgot. So Taurus. Let's talk. Um, Mars is moving into Taurus in January. Um, <laughs> so towards the end of December, that Mars energy that's like building up to move into your sign, I think you're just going to be really feeling that. All of a sudden, I got a very like combative <sighs> like, oh my gosh, feels so masculine. Like combative, like ready to, to, to just take charge, but very aggressive and like confrontational energy coming up. Some of you, this like, you might you might be a little challenged in this area. You might feel like people are challenging you for no reason. It's got a very fiery, over overly aggressive masculine energy. Not necessarily like that you're gonna be like this, but that you might find this energy challenging within yourself coming up as you're going through this is all I'm getting at but they wanted to highlight that. I'm just getting a competitive energy. Hold on a second. Hi. Okay. Why do my twins leave these crystals for the month of December? Why do my Taurians save these crystals for the December? Ooh. Yeah, I was worried about that card coming out. I could feel it and I almost called it, but I didn't. Knight of Swords, Gemini Energy. I'm getting a swallowing of your words. What is this? Careful with that, Taurus. Oh, careful with that. Uh, yeah, swallowing your words. Don't repress your words too much. I especially with this like Mars moving in, moving from Aries to Taurus at the end of December, going into January. Everything has a pre-shadow, so you're gonna feel that pre-shadow a little bit at the end of December. Be so careful with that, especially if you have any Aries placements. Um, you might explode. <laughs> explode on somebody unexpectedly but not a sort of communication but it's very direct it's very blunt sort of communication i feel like you are so close to telling somebody off here so just be mindful one of my torians made these crystals for the month of you keep hearing january eight of cups Ooh, this is communication about moving on Whatever, yeah, okay, so Taurus, whatever you've been called in to support, this moment of saying, look, I want to move on, I want to move on, I want to move on, this is what you're feeling when you're in the midst of this or when you're even at the tail end of it. Like, okay, we, like, this has been the time. I did what I was supposed to do. It's time for me to get up and go. It's time for me to move on. And I feel like that's actually happening more, like, at the end of December. So take all this energy as it resonates. Time is not, time is not linear. All right, but yeah, I feel like you were you were called upon to support someone, uh, whether it was family, a lover, a friend, whoever, and you did it, but you were emotionally detached from it, okay? 
And this whole situation has brought up a lot of stuff for you. A lot of triggers has brought a lot of stuff to the surface. Um, and I think it has been really good for you. But there is like a, a pivotal moment that's happening here of like, okay, I did what I was supposed to do. And I feel like you actually take some time to re like repress yourself in speaking this truth, like holding yourself back a little bit until finally you're like, I can't hold back anymore. I, I, I supported this person and it's been hard for me, but I like, I can't sit here anymore. There is, a, there is a period of time when you are not saying this. Why else my Taurians have used crystals for the month of December? Yep, chair in reverse. You feel like you can't. You want to leave, but you can't. You want to leave, but you can't. You want to leave, but you can't. Yeah, I feel like that Mars energy is going to build up really quick. Be so careful with this. Oh. Some of you might feel like you're abandoning somebody. Some of you that feels like a mother figure. Like you feel like you might be abandoning your mom or your family. Some of you that's going to be a lover. But yeah, you want to leave, but you can't. You want to leave, but you can't. You want to leave, but you can't. So you just swallow your words. You just keep swallowing your words. And so finally, I think you're going to explode. But I think you've learned a lot, like from this whole experience, and it's helped you grow and expand a lot. Some of you, that moment of leaving is going to be the catalyst for the expansion versus being in it itself. Well, else am I trying to use crystals for December? So now we have Queen of Pentacles and Temperance coming in here. And then we have the Two of Pentacles. Overall, we have Magician in Reverse. There you are, Taurus, with the Emperor. Yep, Ten of Pentacles in Reverse. And Nine of Cups with Judgment. Yeah, Taurus, you might not have an exploding moment, but you're going to have a moment. And I think that's also what you're going to be learning is like how to not explode. Because again, you keep swallowing your words, swallowing your words, swallowing your words, swallowing your words until finally it's like, okay, I fulfilled my obligations. I fulfilled them. I can't not say that I want to move on and then just keep myself stuck and keep myself stuck and keep myself stuck and keep myself stuck. Especially as it relates to this Queen of Pentacles energy. Queen of Pentacles with temperance. You know, it's interesting because I actually feel like the person you're dealing with is very... Well, I was about to say insecure, and I don't think that's true. They might come off as insecure or that they're helpless, but I don't think they are. Taurus, they might do this intentionally to you, like, yeah, especially with Magician in Reverse, with the Emperor. Um, they might have ha put, like, portrayed this illusion, like they're insecure or that they, they're helpless or they need you to do this or do that for them. It feels very, like, distorted feminine to me. Um, and you need to realize that like, that's just not true or that's not, like, it's almost like it's not your role to do that. It's like, it, this is, this is the curse. This is the curse. <laughs> like here it is. This is the curse. Um, getting stuck with distorted feminine energies, male or female doesn't matter. We're talking energy. Uh, getting stuck with distorted feminine energy. So like play this like helpless victim. I need you. I need you. I need you. And that plays into your Torian heart. Of like, I'll be there for you, I'll be there for you, I'll be there for you, I'll support you, I'll support you, I'll support you. That second house energy. This is a curse. No, no, no. No, 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 no. And you're going to grow from this experience because it seems like you just suck it up when you are not happy. You suck it up when you feel like, okay, I've done what I needed to do. They still need me. They still need me. No, they don't. They still need me. They still need me. You hold, you hold your shit. You hold your shit. You hold your shit. And finally, you just are like, Two of Pentacles, like, oh no, I need to make a decision. This can't stay. This can't stay. Especially with Magician in Reverse of the Emperor. I definitely feel like you're the Emperor in this position. And I feel like they have caused this illusion with you. Um, that has made you, that this illusion of like, no, like, our home is unstable. No, my money situation. No, I need your financial help. No, I need you to take care of me. Like, that's, a, oh, sorry. Like, this, this, Aspect of the third feminine energy really bothers me on a personal level. Sorry, a um, little personal trigger coming in here. Um, <laughs> huh. uh, yeah, no. And like on some level, it might have made you feel a little like powerful 
like kind of strong, but at the same time, it's it's interesting because it's an illusion like you have control because you're helping them, but in reality, they're controlling you by making you think you need to stay, by making you think you need to be obligated, by making you think you need to do this for them and do that for them and do that for them and do that for them, and then it just keeps you stuck when you want to leave. Some of you, like I said, this is like a mother energy with the Queen of Pentacles, and I feel like this is you but just making the decision like, okay, okay, I can break this shit. <laughs> I can break this cycle, I can break this curse, and I'm just going to be honest that um, time for me to be happy with the Nine of Cups and judgment. This is you making that call, this is you making that decision. Very big decision, big lesson wrapped up in here that your emotional needs are important and that you are going to go from the eight to the nine and you're going to go and grab it by just telling this person what's what. Wow. <laughs> it's called you Virgo again, maybe something they're doing with Virgo. Oh, Taurus, I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, Taurus. I love you guys. I hope you guys got a lot out of that. Don't forget to check out um, the new on Patreon. Everything else you need is linked below for your convenience. And I hope you guys have a really good night and a really good month. I'll see you soon. Namaste.